Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna be breaking down the top three most popular story beat structure things. Let's get to it. Last week, the ever lovely Cam over at Wolfshot Publishing posted a video about the hero's journey, which reminded me that approximately 50 billion million years ago, I promised you guys a video comparing different narrative structures. And so today we're doing that. Also, I'll link Cam's video in the description and in the end cards. Now, if you've heard of some of these guides before but aren't super familiar with them, you're probably thinking that there's like 50 billion million guides out there and how am I possibly gonna talk about just three? And that is because writers suck. And we insist on giving 50 billion million names to just variants of one thing just to make life difficult. But a lot of those variations boil down to three main popular sort of beat sheets that people use. So number one is Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey, AKA the monomyth or stages of monomyth or the 17 stages of monomyth. And this structure, of course, because why not, has four whole freaking variations. And they're all just called The Hero's Journey, so there's no real way to tell them apart except for the people who kind of created them and it's just, it's a mess. But we'll get to that in a second. Number two, we have Save the Cat, also known as the Blake Snyder Beat Sheet, the 15 Beat Sheet. And now you may sometimes hear it called Save the Cat Writes a Novel. And last but not least, one that I've seen around is Dan Harmon's Story Circle, also known as Pot Embryo. And apparently it's mostly only called Plot Embryo by Rachel Stevenson. She loves the hell out of this story method, so she covers it in videos all the time, and she always calls it Plot Embryo. And when I search for Plot Embryo, it's just, it's all her stuff. So I don't know how popular of a term that is, but Plot Embryo does sound cooler, so I'm gonna go with Rachel on this one. So now let's cover a brief history of these three narrative structures and where they sort of came from. So Dan Harmon is a writer and producer. You're probably familiar with his work on Rick and Morty. He is the producer for that. Now Dan started developing the plot embryo method in the 90s when he was stuck writing a screenplay. He wanted to codify the writing process because this crazy lunatic thought that he could bring some level of simplicity to writing. Madness, I know. But his, his sheet that he developed does help a little bit. So Dan went out and from scratch created a whole perfect recipe for fiction. Just kidding, he distilled the hero's journey down into a simplified eight step process. Oh, and then he put them in a circle. But hey, don't complain about the simplicity of relating this to a circle because Joseph Campbell compared the hero's journey to the digestive tract where the hero is being broken down and stripped of his sphere and desire probably desire to live because he's in a digestive tract and that's just why. Next up, the history of Save the Cat. Save the Cat was developed by screenwriter Blake Snyder who passed away unfortunately in 2009 at the age of 51, a mere four years after officially publishing Save the Cat. Now Save the Cat is not technically the name of the beat sheet. It contains the beat sheet, but I'm not gonna use a title that doesn't have the word cat in it when there's an option of a title that has the word cat in it. And that's probably how this title became popularized. Like Dan Herman, Blake Schneider wanted to codify a pattern that he noticed while listening to audio tapes of films and his long commute from Santa Barbara to LA. Okay, pause for a second. I hate traffic as much as the next person, but credit where credit is due, I don't think we properly appreciate how much traffic does for creative minds. I bet 20% of Hollywood ideas come from the fact that LA traffic is hell. But if you thought that Blake Snyder was super clever and also created this whole thing from scratch, you are wrong again, because he directly cites Joseph Campbell's A Hero with a Thousand Faces in his book, the book that I threw across the room and now I'm too lazy to go pick up again. And the book contains the quote, Hero with a Thousand Faces remains the best book about storytelling ever. So we cannot say that he wrote his beat sheet without being influenced by the hero's journey. So not created from the ground up. And Save the Cat writes a novel, 
is written by Jessica Brody, who was contacted to write this book by a publisher who had permission from the Blake Snyder estate. This does have the same exact plot structure, it just surrounds it with writer jargon rather than screenwriter jargon. So if you're a novel writer, I do recommend you just buy this over the regular Save the Cat. I haven't finished the book yet, but so far I'm enjoying it. So if you want to check it out, it is in my Amazon shop, link in the description down below. And Jessica Brody seems like a cool person. She follows me on Twitter. And I'm always like 50% more likely to promote the books of people who follow me on Twitter. That's probably a bad thing. Cool. So now let's cover the history of the hero's journey. I bet you guys are super excited to hear about this Joseph Campbell dude that unlike these other people, actually created a cool narrative structure from the ground up. Whoa, got bad news for you. He didn't create it from the ground up either because nothing is original. Every idea has already been had and life as a writer is just rehashing other people's ideas until you die. So Joseph Campbell, writer of A Hero with a Thousand Faces, which is not the book I'm holding up because I don't own that book, but for some reason I own this book, which is literally an entire book that's just a back and forth interview between Joseph Campbell and some dude called Moyers. And I still have it because, you know, I use it all the time. So I'm holding this up because it's super relevant because Joseph Campbell's name is on it and it's all I got. So Joseph Campbell got his idea for the hero's journey and how to compose it and everything from research by anthropologist Edward Burnett Tyler who observed common patterns and plots of the hero's journey. Also Otto Rank and his psychoanalytic analysis of myths and heroes tales as well as some work from Sigmund Freud and Lord Raglan's work on myth and rituals as well as Carl Jung's view on myth. So Joseph Campbell, although composing this into a really great narrative structure, did pull most of his ideas from research that came before. But in his defense, it is research that he popularized. So here's the thing. Hero's Journey, Save the Cat, Plot Embryo, I keep trying to call it Story Embryo, Plot Embryo, they didn't invent these structures, rather they recognized patterns that were already there and compose them into a guideline that we as writers can follow. So that's not to say that these people don't get credit for their work summarizing it and boiling it down into an easy to follow guide, but the beats themselves have been in development over thousands and thousands of years of storytelling in human history. And while we're talking about humans building off of what already exists, if you go search for the hero's journey, Odds are you're gonna find a ton of variations of it with the exact same name of the hero's journey splattered across them and it's gonna get a little bit confusing. For example, you may find the 17 stages of monomyth that Joseph Campbell developed in his book Hero with a Thousand Faces back in 1949. But you may also find the 1981 version by David Leemins, which is eight steps long. That was also not the book that it was contained in, that's just a book that has David Lehman's name on it, because I hoard books. You could also find Phil Connoisseau's, Connoisseau, Phil Coisineau's Eight Steps, which he developed in 1990, or Christopher Vogler's Twelve Steps, which he developed in 2007. So these three don't even bother with new names and they directly credit Joseph Campbell as being the source of the hero's journey. They just kind of change it up a little bit and simplify it down from 17 steps to eight, eight, and 12. And then of course, there is the copycat of copycats. The hero's journey to save the cat, which fuses the hero's journey with save the cat, which was built on the hero's journey. And this wonderful piece of narrative structure was created in 2018 by the ever lovely author Megan Tennant. Because I needed a slightly different narrative structure for Red River's outline and I liked components from both and neither one worked on their own so I just smushed them together and there's a video on it. And it is my favorite thumbnail ever and I remember nothing about the video so it might be really bad but link in the places where links live. So now you have the history, and now I'm just gonna do a very brief summary of each so you know kind of what reincarnation you want to use for your story. So Joseph Campbell's original 17 stages of monomyth go as follows. Act one, we have separation, which divides into call to adventure, refusal of the call, supernatural aid, crossing the threshold, and belly of the whale. Then we move into act two, which is initiation. And this has step six, which is road of trials, Step seven, which is meeting the goddess. 
Step eight, which is temptation. Step nine, which is atonement. Step 10, which is apotheosis, which I only just realized last year was apotheosis. Ever since my mythology class where I first learned about the hero's journey like five years ago, I've been calling it apoptosis because I was a biology major and apoptosis is a term in biology that means the natural death of cells in the body required for you to live and be healthy and not have cancer. So the first time ever I read it apoptosis and then every time after my brain magically read it as apoptosis because brains are cool like that. So I outlined and wrote the entirety of Aletheia under the belief that this step was called apoptosis and was meant to represent a character's sort of dying a symbolic death and being rebirthed healthier and new. And the entirety of the Aletheia scene where 736 is locked in the send up chamber, all of that came from the misunderstanding of this step and that is the weirdest way in which my biology degree has ever influenced my writing. Number 11, the ultimate boon. And then we have act three, which is the return. So step 12 is refusal of the return. Step 13 is the magic of flight. Step 14 is rescue from without. Step 15 is crossing the return threshold. Step 16 is Master of Two Worlds, and Step 17 is Freedom to Live. So those are the original 17, but now if you search the internet for the hero's journey, odds are you're not gonna find the 17 stages of Monomyth. Rather, you're gonna find one of the very, very many condensed versions out in circulation. Among those alternate versions, you'll probably find the three variations in particular that are fairly popularized. Firstly, David Leeming's version, which is Stage 1. Miraculous Conception and Birth. Stage 2, Initiation of the Hero Child. Stage 3, Withdrawal from Family for Meditation and Preparation. Stage 4, Trial and Quest. Stage 5, Death. Stage 6, Descend into the Underworld. Stage 7, Resurrection and Rebirth. And Stage 8, Ascension, Apotheosis and Atonement. Yeah, that one is super weird and really weirdly specific. It doesn't really embody the hero's journey. I don't know what the hell David Lehman was doing, but that's the thing that exists that you might find. Then we have Phil Cosineas, which is stage one, Call to Adventure. Stage two, The Road of Trials. Stage three, The Vision Quest. Stage four, Meeting with the Goddess. Stage five, The Boon. Stage six, The Magic of Flight. Stage seven, The Return Threshold and stage eight, Master of Two Worlds. And the most common one that you'll find, which you'll probably recognize, is by Christopher Vogler. Step one, Ordinary World. Step two, Call to Adventure. Step three, Refusal of the Call. Step four, Meeting the Mentor. Step five, Crossing the First Threshold. Step six, Tests and Allies and Enemies. Step seven, Approach to the Innermost Cave. Step eight, The Ordeal. Step nine, Reward. Step 10, the road back. Step 11, the resurrection. And step 12, return with the elixir. I think that one is a pretty solid version that works with most stories and is fairly modernized. Most of the graphics you find when you search the hero's journey are gonna be these 12 steps. They're gonna be a little bit more cleaned up and are probably something good to go off of. But as you can tell, with the exception of whatever the hell David Leeming was doing, I don't know. The others are all very similar. They're just slightly condensed versions of the original hero's journey. Now the other two being newer and being already based on the hero's journey only have one variant each. So first off, we have the save the cat beat sheet, which goes, Step one, opening image. Step two, theme stated. Step three, setup. Step four, catalyst. Step five, debate. Step six, break into two. Step seven, B story. Step eight, fun and games. Step nine, midpoint. Step 10, bad boys close in. Step 11, all is lost. Step 12, dark night of the soul. Step 13, break into three. Step 14, finale. And step 15, final image. So as you can tell, this version is ripe with screenwriters speak. But Dan Herman is also a screenwriter, so what about his? Is his a little more palatable to us writers who write novels? So Dan Harmon's plot embryo goes, Step 1, a character in a zone of comfort or familiarity. Step 2, they desire something. Step 3, they enter an unfamiliar situation. Step 4, they adapt to the situation. Step 5, they get that which they wanted. 
Step six, they pay a heavy price for it. Step seven, they return to their familiar situation. And step eight, they have changed as a result. I personally think Dan Harmon's is kind of more of a match to novels in terms of terminology. It's kind of formatted in more of an internal way of what the character is feeling, which I kind of like. So what method is best for you? It doesn't actually matter. The truth is, all of these, except for maybe David Leeming's weird ass version, because what the fuck? But the rest of them all share most of the main, most important elements and beats of a story. Now, I personally tend to stick around the 17 stages of Monomyth or the 12 stages of Monomyth, but whenever I use these formats, I skip things, I skim things. These are just rough maps, rough guidelines. You don't have to follow them to the letter. These are just kind of to help you organize your ideas. Wait, what am I saying? Of course there's a right answer. The right answer for which one you should use is clearly the hero's journey to save the cat. So that was it for this video. If you want to pick apart the stages of the hero's journey that made it into Aletheia, you can check it out, hardcover, paperback, ebook. Let me know in a comment, have you ever used one of these narrative structures? If so, did you like it? How did it go? Check out my video, as well as Cam's video, breaking down the hero's journey in detail and actually explaining it. He used a more modernized 12-step hero's journey. I liked it, it's one that I've seen before and I highly recommend you check it out. And thank you so much for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video.